Jack Powers, pick 103. Inasmuch as I was one of the three officers of the Navy selected to learn to fly when the Navy ordered its first three airplanes and have stuck to the naval aviation ever since, some people call me a walking history of that service. Of course, there were a lot of other people in it, but unfortunately, the early timers that went in with me were long ago killed in accidents. I learned to fly under Curtis, Glenn Curtis, and consequently was uh, associated him, with him over a long period of years. I don't believe Glenn ever got the full credit for all that he did in so far as the present history of aviation is concerned. He was a man of great vision and his interest was to develop aviation in a form that would be useful to the Navy. May I interrupt for a moment now? Yes, sir. Yes. take one or four. We're all very young lieutenants. I was the youngest. I uh, was ordered to Hammondsport, New York, where Curtis had his little plant and his cow pasture field and a lake on which he could fly seaplanes. I took my instruction up there, beginning in the spring of 1911. I uh, stayed with naval aviation throughout my naval career. Consequently, I am occasionally called a walking history of that particular service, and I think in some small way helped him in the develop development of the types that the Navy wanted. May I interrupt? Him? You can put it back together. Those early days of training at uh, Hammersport were not without uh, adventure. There was only one training plane, a small flimsy affair, and it only had power enough to get one person off the ground. <clears throat> Therefore, you uh, learned by uh, running across, back and forth across the field until you got the idea and then they gave you a little more power and uh, you began to hop and then to make straightaway flights. My very first time, <clears throat> and I'd never been on the seat of an airplane before, when I took off across the field, I found myself 20 feet in the air and needless to say crashed. I was only injured in a minor way, but it was quite a setback because that was the only training plane they had and it had to be rebuilt before there could be any other instruction. Because of that and also the fact that uh, <clears throat> you only flew in the very best of weather when it was absolutely calm, there was lots of time to talk. And during those periods, I was very interested in finding out about uh, Curtis's idea. Well, that was back in 1910 when he conducted those tests. He also had the idea of speed, which was astonishing to me. The fastest plane existing at that time made a bare 60 miles an hour, but he was talking of uh, eventually something over 400 miles an hour and flying the oceans and things like that, which we frankly didn't believe would ever come off, but of course you all know dead. Very few people remember that in uh, 1914, Curtis designed and built a flying boat with three engines for the purpose of attempting the transatlantic flight. He wasn't going to make it. There was to be a British officer and an American officer, and uh, I had been selected as the American pilot. The plane flew all right, but uh, the, the World War I came along and the attempt was never made. I think very fortunately because uh, I don't believe they would have ever been able to carry enough fuel to get entirely across, even stopping at the Azores. The war came along 
That ended the fun. It became a very serious matter. And uh, there's no use of relating the history of the war. <clears throat> Everybody knows about that and how aviation developed with very rapid strides. But uh, there was one <clears throat> incident in development that should be pointed out. We were trying to help out the British and the French in subduing the uh, German submarines. And the Navy asked Curtis if he couldn't uh, design and build aircraft that would be able to fly across because there weren't many ships and uh, there were great losses from submarines. Nevertheless, the aircraft were needed on the other side and they took up a great deal of space aboard ship. So he did design a type known as the NCs. And uh, luckily for me, I was selected to command that expedition. It's all history now. Two of the three...